Now, let's branch that, that now into neurotransmitters. And we talked about anxiety, depression in our society now. So we know we've got these kind of neurochemicals. How do they affect our mental clarity and mood? So these neurotransmitters are brain messengers. And the ones that we're really kind of focused on today are, are messengers that are being released from the hypothalamus. This is a, mm -hmm. a group of nerve cells, cluster of nerve cells, an organ in the brain. And it's releasing these messages throughout the day. So there's neurotransmitters, uh, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, gamma amino butric acid. These are messengers that are released to then uh, allow the brain cells to communicate with one another and then to initiate reactions in the body. People have, have heard of uh, of serotonin, the happy hormone, right? So mm -hmm. if you've heard of, you know, you've heard of Prozac and Lexapro and all these antidepressants that are out there now, and you know, there'll be a new one out tomorrow, I'm sure. But, but serotonin is one of many of these neurotransmitters that help to regulate our pain you know our, our our pain threshold how much pain we we experience regulate our sleep regulate our mental clarity our moods regulate our bowel movements um regulate oftentimes our metabolism how how well or how poorly our metabolism works so they're indispensable and yet they are very vulnerable to becoming deficient through different things that we come encounter encounter with every day yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's a lot of different medications that target these different neurotransmitters. Like, for example, if somebody's depressed, you know, the, a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists, I should say psychiatrists are prescribing things like uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So things like that um, are antidepressants. You know, obviously a lot of people are out there. They think that these sort of neurotransmitter targeted medications are really the only you know, clinically proven option when it comes to having these mood disorders and treating them? There's quite a bit of debate about if they even work. Yeah. Um, and there's a quite a bit of a debate if the neurotransmitter uh, theory with depression even holds up at this point. Having said, you know, uh, um, Candace Pert, who also was a Nobel mm. Prize winner, she she came up with this whole thing yep. about neurotransmitters, the molecules of emotion. And she's come out recently and said she's really not sure that this theory works. Mm. Now, not to blow everybody away. So let's stick with the fact that if you're low in these neurotransmitters, you're probably going to have some problems with anxiety, depression, mental clarity issues, and some other things. But the antidepressant revolution, which started in the 1960s, and has now, you know, gone over the last uh, 80 years or so has morphed into uh, more uh, newer medications like, well, Prozac was the first selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, Selexa, Lexapro. A lot of patients that I work with fibromyalgia are on Cymbalta. That's a big one for them. But these medications, it's it's important to point out that they have potential side effects. Ironically, these antidepressants can cause anxiety and depression. They can cause diffuse achy pain. They deplete your natural sleep hormone melatonin. They can cause weight gain. They can cause uh, uh, suicidal tendencies, more so in teenagers than in a, an adult. And, it, and it's you know important to point out that no one has an antidepressant deficiency. Mm -hmm. And these medications are, as you described, designed to help you hang on to serotonin. So again, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor they're designed to help you hang on to what serotonin you have in your brain but if you've depleted that serotonin or you just don't have enough just gen genetically the way god made you you can't produce enough if you're using a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and there's nothing to reuptake it's not going to do anything it's like using a gasoline additive in an empty gasoline tank it just it, it's not going to work we also know David, that in the meta-analysis where you look at sometimes hundreds of different studies, in this case, probably dozens of different studies on uh, antidepressants, we see that antidepressants are no better than a sugar pill 50% of the time. Mm. So 70% wow. of these studies show that uh, th that these medications are no better than sugar pill 50% of the time. Now, that's not to discourage or to belittle anybody that's on these medications. If you feel like they're helpful, that's fine, but they're not without some baggage and they're not without some controversy. Yeah. And, you know, when, whenever we're thinking about what, you know, mood disorders from a functional perspective, I always think brain inflammation, 
We know that with these mood disorders, there's an underlying level of inflammation. And there may be issues with, you know, people either not producing enough serotonin or breaking it down too quickly. These could be issues that the person may be dealing with, but the brain inflammation is there. And, you know, it's like this underlying fire affecting the brain. And, and we, we've got to address that root cause in the, while we may, you know, in certain cases address uh, particular neurotransmitters. And if we're only focusing on the neurotransmitter, we may get some symptomatic relief, but we're not actually getting to the root cause. And in the case of a lot of these medications, like if we're breaking down the enzymes that metabolize serotonin, if we are inhibiting those enzymes, the body starts, the, our physiology starts to adjust around it and it will increase the amount of enzymes. And so then we, we, you know, we need higher and higher doses of the drug. And then we have terrible symptoms if we ever like miss a day on, on, on the drug or, you know, if we're trying to come off of the drug too quickly, I mean, it could be uh, catastrophic. And so, because the body, the whole physiology has adapted and adjusted to it. So this is problematic. Some of these things can be helpful short term, but you know, we really want to be thinking about getting to the root cause factors. Now, I know that you really like to use mono amino acid therapy as you're working with people. So can you explain that in more detail? Yeah, absolutely. So I want to just before I do is say I totally agree with you about this inflammation, the brain inflammation, brain on fire. This is something this is really kind of a radical thinking, you know, to think that your the inflammation is causing your depression. But, you know, if we if, if we if we uh, admit it, inflammation and stress are probably the two drivers of every unwanted health condition out there. So it's it really shouldn't be a revelation that inflammation is right. it's been, brain inflammation is playing a role in depression. So then I think from what I've found over the years of working with a lot of patients with mood disorders, it's a combination of nutritional deficiencies, certainly poor diet, stress, but, but also inflammation. Um, but where do these neurotransmitters come from? You know, so they don't come from Prozac. You know, again, yeah. those medications are only designed to help you hang on to what serotonin you have. These neurotransmitters come from proteins. So when we eat a protein in that protein, we have amino acids. So there's uh, the, a certain form of amino acid. There's there's 20 of them, nine that are essential and 11 that are non-essential. The nine essential amino acids, you your body cannot make those. You have to get them in your diet. And unfortunately, there's people in our population that cannot take the food that they eat and and convert it into into these neurotransmitters. In particular, there's a there's a big uh, subset of fibromyalgia folks who just don't have a enzyme that you mentioned earlier, and that and that chyanurin pathway, which takes tryptophan, one of these essential amino acids, and then converts it into 5 hydroxytryptophan they don't have that enzyme. They can't mm. do it. It's blocked. So they're already at risk. But where these uh, neurotransmitters come from is foods that we eat. So serotonin, the brain chemical serotonin is very calming. Uh, it's, it's an antidepressant, helps with mental clarity, helps to regulate your bowel movements. You have more serotonin receptors in your intestinal tract than you do in your brain. That's why when you get when you get nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach. But serotonin comes from the amino acid tryptophan, which combines with five, which I'm sorry, combines with B vitamins, uh, B2, B3, vitamin C, and the mineral magnesium. And then that converts into five hydroxytryptophan and then can, turns into serotonin. Uh, uh, serotonin is one of two calming or inhibitory neurotransmitters. The other one is gamma aminobutric acid, which is derived uh, partly from L glutamine. It's, uh, and then there are the catecholamines. These are the stimulating neurotransmitters like opioids, which come from L-phenylalanine, an, another amino, essential amino acid, norepinephrine, which comes from L-phenylalanine, and um, epinephrine, uh, which yeah. comes from L-phenylalanine. These stimulating neurotransmitters will give us- Did you us mention dopamine drive. as well? Because dopamine, dopamine would be in there. Well, left one out. Dopamine absolutely yeah. comes from yeah. l Phenylalanine and, and opioids actually come from the the mirror image of L phenylalanine. It comes mm. from DL phenylalanine. Important that yeah. I correct that. And opioids, we think about like in our endogenously produced opioids, we're thinking of endorphins, kind of like when you go out yeah. for a run, 
And at first your joints are kind of a little bit sore and then you get going and then all of a sudden the pain goes away and it's like, wow, you just kind of get this runner's high. If you've ever experienced that, um, that's kind of that effect of the endorphins. So that's what you're referring to there. Yeah. And that's why exercise is one of the best antidepressant therapies you can, you can initiate. It really, it, it really works quite well, but anytime we're under stress, our body, our, our body's releasing these chemicals, releasing these neurotransmitters to deal with that stress. When we're under stress, our body's releasing a small amount of opioids to deal with that stress. And if we never turn that stress off, eventually we can deplete that, you know, that, that neurotransmitter. Same thing with serotonin. When we stay under stress, we can, you know, deplete that that neurotransmitter, and then we start to have issues with anxiety and depression, and feeling stressed out, or might having issues with loose bowel movements from irritable bowel, or uh, mental clarity, where our brain just, you know, can't think of the word we want. Um, but but stress really is the driver for so many of these disconnects with the brain communicating with the rest of the body. 